Welcome to Marco Martin's Monday Mornings, where I moan on a Monday. I'm so tired of people glorifying the past. So, so tired of people glorifying the past. Every day on social media, you see something about, in my day, we used to. When you see something, I was born in the wrong generation with a photo of like a World War II soldier leaving his girlfriend and that was romance. It's like, yeah, let, it was so much better when men were going off to Europe to die. That's fantastic. Great, great call. And people used to have to hang around with each other far too much. You'd have to go and do things with people in your neighborhood. Oh, hey, Jim, how's it going? How's your wife's foot? You know, like you know about Jim and his wife's foot. That's all. That, that should be reserved for coworkers. Those are the people, that's enough people to know about and know what's going on with their lives. And it's already tinkering on too much. It's too much knowledge about other people and what's going on in their lives other than what they're broadcasting on social media. You, you don't need that much relativity to your community, to like your immediate social community. You don't need to know so much about each other. You need to be meeting new people regularly. It's the only bit of excitement we can get in our lives today. And people say it's a millennial thing. Like millennials don't want to know their neighbors in the way that previous generations did. They don't want to socialize with their immediate people. They want to create like a smaller, close community of friends that could be from anywhere, mostly people they've met online, and interact with them sparingly. I like to think I'm more independently minded than that, and it's not because I'm a millennial that I don't like the idea of knowing my neighbors really well. But this thing of glorifying the past and what you used to do is families used to get together in the living room, and with the limited technology, their entertainment was a radio drama. Oh, this is police cop file thing investigation. On a Sunday morning, police officer Jim was trying to find out about his wife's foot. (laughs) Oh, that sounds terrible. Radio dramas? At least we have Netflix. And while I'm saying this, while I'm busy saying this, I realize you're listening to me just moaning. How much better is it? to sit around and listen to me moan about stuff than to listen to a radio drama. Maybe the radio dramas were better. I'm not sponsored by Red Bull, by the way. I can't be. I can't backflip a bicycle. My favorite part about a Red Bull, actually, I'm having it on Monday morning. Can you believe it? Early in the morning, you're having a Red Bull. That's so bad for you, Marco. That's my favorite part. When people tell you how bad Red Bull is for you, I always do the same thing. Always look them dead in the eye and go, the ultimate level of cool because you're showing how little you care that was the coolest thing when i was growing up the people who cared the least were the coolest people if you don't give a shit at all you're cool that was the coolest kid in school was the one who gave the fewest shits and <laughs> like previous generations perhaps mine included i don't want to give away my age too much but You'd go out on bicycles with your friends. You'd go out and smoke cigarettes. I never really got into smoking cigarettes. But that's what they used to do. That's what you used to do is go out with your friends as teenagers and smoke cigarettes. And like this generation of teenagers are more depressed than anybody. All the stats are through the roof. Teen anxiety, teen depression, cyberbullying, the reason behind all of this. Just get on a bicycle, go smoke cigarettes with your friends. Instead of doing meth. (laughs) Meth must be so good. Meth must be so good that people throw away their lives. It's like, I had a job and a house, but I decided after doing meth that meth was better than having a job and a house. I'd rather just live on the streets and do meth. Must be so good for people to throw away their whole lives on it. (sighs) And... We used to all like just enjoy the same things, you know, and I don't know if anyone really enjoyed it. They'd have something like a flower fair or flower market, flower festival. 
and events with flowers are normally bad enough. Like weddings always have flowers. It's always flowers at weddings and they're like a big centerpiece. And the, it's a big theme of the wedding, especially because the couple or the couple's parents or the bride's parents or whoever paid so much money for flowers. It made up such a big portion of the cost of a wedding. And then no one even remembers anything about the flowers ever. No one cares. No one cares about the flowers. If you remember the flowers at a wedding, guaranteed it was a horrible wedding. You did not enjoy that wedding at all. <laughs> Uh, it's a sign. It's a sign of a bad event is when you remember the flowers. Now, imagine the whole communities used to get together and go to a flower festival where the flowers were the focus of the whole thing. Flowers are the main thing. That's the whole event. People used to get together and do this. But in saying that, I'm not saying that our generation is the best generation. I'm not trying to glorify our generation by talking badly about the past. I'm just trying to remain, remind everyone rather that the past sucked as well. But I think the future looks even worse, even scarier. I think we've hit a level of technology where we should be like, should we stop now? I imagine we should stop. Like when the first iPhones came out, that wasn't the point to stop. I think iPhones have gotten really good now. But like iPhone 15, I think we've gone a little too far. Like the iPhone 13 or even like 10 or something, that was good. That Stop. We should have stopped there. Stop making new things. Stop with AI. Stop all of this. Stop. We're far enough. Because the future is looking really scary. AI is coming for everybody's jobs. And how economics works is like when there's a huge group of people that are short on money, that means the money has to have gone somewhere. So somebody or a smaller portion of the population is going to have access to all of the money. You know, a big corporation is going to replace 20,000 jobs with AI. And those 20,000 jobs cost a certain amount of money that the AI is not going to cost. Well, that means that there's 20,000 people with no money, but then one or two or three or four people who have all of that money to them. And I think that what a generation of people now need to pray for and hope for, they all have to hope and pray that the people who have that money like feet. If they all into feet, that's going to be the best thing for future generations because at least you can make money just taking photos of your feet. That's going to be the way forward is that if all those people who make all the AI money like feet, you're in with a shot. You've got an opportunity to make some money just taking some photos of your feet with your iPhone 27 because we're not going to stop with technology. It's going to keep coming. It might be like the same thing as a 15 just with like a slightly better camera and then like a screen on the back or something stupid. We've gone too far. We should stop. We should stop. Everything's fine. It's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Anyway, I'm Marco Martins. Good luck with the rest of your week. <laughs>